If you want to get stabilized 4K video on your FPV drone, there's a lot of options out there. You can spend an enormous amount of money on the DJI 03, which I have here on this Cinebot. But if you don't want to spend that much money, you can spend $89 on a Runcam Thumb Pro that gets 4K. It has stabilized gyro built in for stabilized video, and it also only weighs 16 grams. So what's the difference? Let's go ahead and take a look now at the video versus the O3 on the Runcam Thumb Pro, and we'll come back to the bench, and I'll tell you all about it in this review. $89 4K stabilized video. So the big thing here in this video and this review is just a comparison between DJI 03 and the Thumb Pro. And do you really need DJI 03 if you're strapped for cash, you want to film 4K at 30 frames per second, have stabilization on there in your quad, pretty much any quad. The Thumb Pro is 16 grams and it's $89. So uh, the big takeaway for this review of my Thumb Pro is just to compare it to DJI 03 because, well, DJI 03 is $229. Uh, so we're comparing a $229 stabilized Rocksteady 2.0 DJI camera to the Thumb Pro with gyro flow stabilization. Um, and this is going to be uploaded at 4K, so you can make this huge on your TV, and you can check it out. We're going to do some low light filming here, um, left and right, 03 on the left, Thumb Pro on the right. We'll also do some indoor on a kind of low light level filming as well. But my first impression of the Thumb Pro outside when I put the, this footage back on my laptop and looked at it, I thought it did pretty good for dusk. There's not a lot of grain in the video, which is kind of amazing for how dark it is at this point. And there's some kind of little spot on the O3 lens. Uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's inside the lens. But right there you can see there's a little more blue in the sky above the tree line for the O3. Thumb Pro looks a little more gray up top, but they look virtually the same down low with the lights on the porch, on the front, and the back deck. And I have to say, the O3 brings out the green grass more, whereas the Thumb Pro looks more washed out. So these cameras, both of them, the way they're sitting, the way they're filming, they're both stock settings. Um, they're both running gyro stabilization. And the O3 does seem to have a little more kind of yellow tint to it. You can change that in the white balance. Now I'm st we're stuck in a tree. Um, so let's start over inside and just look at the, the yellow balance there with the O3. It's more of a warm setting. Thumb Pro seems to be set uh, a little more default to kind of a cooler setting. But indoors, I feel like the Thumb Pro looks pretty good. It seems lighter as well. It's a little bit of a brightness difference there. You see a little better. But outdoor, Again, like the O3 has a little more saturation. But going back to the deck, you know, the Thumb Pro is slightly, slightly less yellow tint to it. Right there, you can really see a big difference in it. And this is an example of how well the O3 does when facing into lights. You see the Thumb Pro has a big white out right there, and that light points right at the camera. So it is a more expensive sensor in the O3. But I was pleasantly surprised at the outdoor performance of both these cameras. Um, given that for the last three or four years, we've been looking at sensors that aren't quite up to this type of par. And we saw a lot more noise in the last, say, five years ago in these digital cameras. So they really come a long way for outdoor flying and low light. I don't see a lot of big difference for a light transition from dark to light with both these cameras. So the sensor's pretty quick. The data's traveling pretty fast at 50 megabit on the Thumb Pro, so that does help out a lot. And if you look really closely, you can see the O3 has a little better stabilization with Rocksteady 2.0 um, than the built-in gyro flow. And you can also stabilize this even further inside your editor if you want to add some type of stabilized filter. But hopefully this kind of gives you uh, a better awareness of O3 and some of the cheapest 4K cameras out there with stabilization. So uh, the big point of this review is you can still get 4K at 30 frames per second with some gyro flow on board. 
uh, for under $100. It's still possible. And do you really need 03? Um, some of you guys don't at this point. Fly what you got. Let's go back to the bench. All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test and the little comparison between the DJI 03 stabilized Rocksteady 2.0 video versus the stabilized gyro on board the Run Cam Thumb Pro. Now, the Run Cam Thumb Pro comes with a lot of stuff in the box. It comes with this mount that actually does fit down to the Cinebot 30, which is super great. Uh, it just slides right in. It's a TPU mount. It has a little bit of give here for kind of a little bit of extra stabilization with that TPU mount. It also comes with the hardware here. And this one supports, it says in the manual, up to a 256 gigabyte card. Um, but then another spot in the manual, it says it only supports 128 gigabytes. So um, I, I safely run a 32 gig in there. Uh, U3 or better class card will do just fine. Um, one drawback I think about this camera, we could talk about cons because we do talk about cons in my reviews. Some people think we don't, but we do. And here's a con. The con is that it only powers from five volt. Um, they do give you two different cables in the box. On the very back, it has four out uh, harness there, and I'm only using the two out right now, and that's ground and five volt on mine. Um, so I have no camera control, but if you want to, you can go to a UART tab on the flight controller, and then you can put stop, start, and record on your switches. So um, you can control that from beta flight. That's pretty cool. You can set that up as a switch. I love that. So um, RX and TX there. As far as this video compared to the O3, um, the O3 is nice, but this is the newer version compared to the older version of the Thumb Pro. And the old version had a smaller field of view. This one has 155 degrees of field of view there. And it also does 50 megabits, so um, I feel like that's pretty good for the bit rate. Also, I, I like the, the fact that this is only 16 grams, so really if you want to, you can put it on something as small as the Beta FPV75X and you can still get some 4K stabilized video. It also has a push button in the very front and it can't be powered up until the quad is powered up. But once it comes on, you'll see a red light come up here on the front. If you long press it, it will turn off. If you long press it again, it will turn back on. And on this side of the camera, we have a USB port on this side for firmware updates. You can also use the remote control if you scan the QR code in your app on your phone and change settings or start and stop the video from your phone like a remote control. So one cool feature about it also that you might not know, maybe you didn't see the other reviewers try it, but it can also shoot different types of orientations. It can shoot zero degrees, it can shoot 90 degrees up and down, it can also shoot 180 if you flip it all the way this way, it'll flip over for you, so that's kind of cool. It'll shoot 270 degrees. Um, so from zero to 270 degrees on the different orientations. Um, very similar to like the DJI Mini 3, which is kind of cool. Um, my, I guess one of the other, like we can get into some of the cons. Um, one of my, my pet peeves about this is it only runs off five volt, which I mentioned before. Um, and that makes it less portable going in between one quad to the next. I wish that RunCam would come out with something that would allow us to plug this camera into, uh, say, like maybe a downstep regulator uh, to a balance port on a battery. That would be super nice. If you want to, you could solder this one down to another quad's flight controller and use this wire that you also get that's just basically a power wire. Um, down to the other quad. So you can have it move freely between two different quads. I, I also like that um, one of the, the pros is that it's only 16 grams and you can absolutely put it on something super small. Um, 16 grams is super light. I also like the fact that it has gyro flow on board um, and it has a replaceable cover on the front. Smack this hard. It's likely that you're not going to break the lens because you have this protective cover over top of this lens right here. So you have some protection. If we just turn it just like to one side or the other, it should pop off. Let me see if I can just do that real quick. Yep, it turns to the side. And now you have access to put on any type of ND filter. And you know, guys, new guys will ask me, what do I need an ND filter for? Well, the ND filter will help you with some stabilization, so additional stabilization and reduce some of the jello. So, um, but on a nice sunny day also, it'll bring the sky out and really bring out 
the, the horizon definition and the clouds off in the distance. Uh, it'll just bring all that to focus. That way everything's not blown out above the horizon line. Um, with really cheap cameras, if you look at some of the cheaper sensors, you're going to see above the horizon line, say this is the horizon line here, it's all going to be whited out, um, but not with the sensor that's in this camera. So everything looks pretty good there, but this is the protective lens cover. Uh, has that kind of diamond pattern on it. And this is the ND8. You can get some filters. So I have an ND8 filter here. I have um, an ND32, which is a little darker. And then my last filter here they sent me is an ND16. So um, I usually keep these in these little plastic bags that they came in so that they don't get scratched. And we'll put this cover back on there, but this, this lens seems to be smaller than the um, older one that they had released, the original one, but, but it's, it's a larger field of view at 155 degrees. So I also think that the bit rate's decent on here at 50 megabit. Um, so overall, you know, we have an $89 4K stabilized camera, um, not bad versus the original Thumb Pro. Um, so I, I think this one uh, is, is the one to get. If you, if, you want, if you want a deal, grab the old one. Um, that one also still supports gyro flow, but I, I think people had more of a problems with that one. So they updated it. And now you can also do firmware updates. You can use a remote controller with this one. Um, and I just wish it had more options to move back and forth from one quad to the other. It's probably my biggest drawback, but um, you know, first is DJI 03. Uh, this is a heck of a lot cheaper if you want to go and get some 4K video, stabilized video on your FPV drone. So I hope you guys appreciated this review and always the honest reviews on the channel right here. Um, it's funny, like guys are like, oh, if he likes it, you know, he's a shill. If he, if he doesn't like it, then, you know, he's, uh, he's a hater. Um, but it's so funny when reviewers um, get kicked back from certain people. But... Um, it is what it is on the channel. It's what I always say. It is what it is. It's a it's a decent little camera for 16 grams. What do you expect, right? Um, 89 bucks. Love it or hate it. There it is, guys. I appreciate you for watching. As always, give us a thumbs up, and please do subscribe on the channel. And I will see you on the next one. I'm going to get more coffee. Take care. <laughs> bye bye.